here the frugal crafter today i'm going to show you how i store my knitting and crochet supplies and hopefully i have enough juice left in my camera because it's acting like it's going to be out of battery i've got a little empty battery symbol in the corner so i'm going to get right to it um most of my stuff is up there on that shelf and i'm going to zoom in a bit here hopefully you'll be able to see that there all right so up on that shelf you can see that i have a very fancy knitting needle vase here it's just a um just a vase with knitting needles in it i've got a kind of like a wine box with my larger barrel plastic needles in there and also a mason jar with um, some shorter needles so my short length needles are there which are really good for kids to knit with they're easier to handle than the longer ones but my longer um, needles are in this vase and on the shelf right below it and i'm just gonna tip my camera down i'm actually gonna brighten up the uh the camera a little bit there um i have did that brighten it up yes it did um i have my other knitting supplies which we will go in and look at things individually i got my bag that i keep um i keep all of my everyday tools i need so this is always in my bag if i'm working on a project i have like my head cut off there i'll tip that down a little bit and then i've got my um interchangeables which honestly i could get rid of all of my needles and crochet hooks almost probably like 90 percent of them and just use these except since i teach classes i still you know want to keep my straight needles and um other crochet hooks and whatnot but um i love these i'm going to show you these in a moment up close on my table i my makeup's all worn off i'm a fright but sorry about that and plus i've got the marticia adams thing going on because i have the auto white balance on my camera and also white balance on my face which is kind of freaky um and oh right here i have all my circular needles not that you know again it's not like i really need them because i have the denise sets but when i find them for a dollar i grab them and i have other knitting accessories in here this basket is my double pointed needles and some other tools which i'm going to show you close up at my table so i'm not going to go into that right now i've got my little some other accessories those are the nook pom-pom and tassel makers and then i have this tin here that is filled with crochet hooks so i'm going to pause the video now and we're going to go look at all this stuff close up at the table okay i plugged my camera in so it's not going to run out of batteries um did i even mention that it was running out of i don't even know um so here is the tin with my crochet hooks in it and i also keep my um like the knitting loom hooks in here too and i want to share a little tip with you um i went and i used purple nail polish and put them on the bottom of all my crochet hooks and that way i knew that if i had these out of class which i that's why i have all these additional crochet hooks is because i teach classes i know that if that if at the end of the class if the crochet hook is a purple end then it's mine and if it doesn't then it's one of my students now this is mine it just came recently in a actually it's one of my daughters it came in one of their kits but um that way i know at a glance whether a crochet hook is mine or my students because i don't want to walk off with one of theirs and i also don't want to lose mine but I'm, i was more concerned with walking off with somebody else's hook because as you know i have uh duplicates so also on that shelf i showed you these these are um plexiglass pom-pom makers and tassel makers these are by patty whack and i really like them they're very quick and easy to use and um i also have some smaller versions of those of the tassel maker right here uh they were like 25 cents at martin so i grabbed a couple so i could have them on hand during classes um this right here is actually a brush roll up now if you like this it's something that you can easily make um it's canvas you could even use like a placemat or something if you didn't have any canvas but basically there's these little um sewn little slots and it, okay it's it's late and i keep saying um and then it's driving me crazy because i keep thinking that i'm saying um and then it makes me want to say it again and it's just like a self-fulfilling prophecy i guess anyway i keep all of my double pointed needles in here i just want to zoom out a little bit and it works really good for keeping them organized a lot of these were given to me so i don't have the packaging for them so i just kind of wrote the sizes down there and i have a uh, actually a gauge tool in my knitting bag so if i want to double check i can before i begin knitting a project so i don't end up with the wrong needles by mistake and it easily rolls up so you could get these at an art supply store a lot of times they come with brushes in them fairly affordably or you could sew something up pretty easily i think but that's the best way i found to keep my double pointed needles easily organized 
So else, what else I have in here? I have this, um, it's a little clover knitting spool, kind of like a French knitter, but it's got several different tops you can put on with different pegs. So you can make uh, bracelets and necklaces and other fun things like that. Uh, this was one of my, with the coupon purchases, I think it's only like 12 bucks, but I, I uh, used a coupon one day because I thought it looked like fun and I really, really enjoyed it. So all these things fit uh, nicely right in here and it goes on my shelf. And this is uh, my newspaper basket. I did a tutorial on that. If you're interested, it's on my channel. I'll try to remember to put a link to it um, in the video description. I also keep a tiny little composition book that I've altered. So when I'm, uh, a lot of times I'll kind of make a pattern up as I go along and um, then I just kind of write what I've done already. So if I need to re repeat it or if I really like it and I want to write the pattern down for my blog, I can do that as well. I'm not much of a pattern writer, but at least I can write it down so I can understand it anyway. All right, this is uh, the pom-pom maker that I showed you on my shelf. I like it because it's not one of the circles. I've had the circle ones and actually I have some in my bag, I think. I really don't like using the little circles because it takes a long time and I have a hard time getting a really full pom-pom that way. I pr much prefer these or the uh, or this pom-pom maker for making pom-poms, but that's just me. You may have different preferences. And this is the uh, little nook, which is like a crochet hook with, you put this long string on the end and you can get knitting stitches with a crochet hook. I didn't really take to this very easily, but um, I could use these hooks as regular crochet hooks. I do intend on um, spending some more time with this, but for now, it's just kinda, it's just been kinda put aside for now. Now my knitting bag, it's a little dusty. I'll show you what's in here because this is always in my bag whenever I am knitting away from home. I have all kinds of goodies in here. <laughs> so what I'm usually bringing is my um, needles or crochet hook and the yarn that I'm working with and then I bring this bag. So in here I have some small crochet hooks for like picking up drop stitches or if I have to work something in really quickly. I have yarn needles and I have quite a few yarn needles. I picked them up on sale at Martin's and uh, so these would be for like plastic canvas or you know knitting as well. I just keep it all together. They don't take up a lot of space so I'd rather just have it all here where I know where they are. I've got a stitch counter and I like this because I can put it on a circular needle um, to keep track of where you are in a pattern. I've got some little pins and cable needles in here. I do enjoy cabling, which is kind of funny. I'm not a really fussy person, but I like to I like to cable. So I keep all those little little guys in here. I did have everything loose in my bag, but it was um, it was really hard to find things. Another little cable needle, some bobbins, some point protectors. Which if you're doing a hat or socks or something on double pointed needles, and you have to put your work away, um, you can put your points on these ends so your stitches don't slip off. And then I have a, another stitch counter, which would slide on a pair of straight needles stitch markers, which are handy, and uh, highlighters and pens for marking patterns. This is cool. This is actually, um, I don't know why all yarn brands don't do this, but Lion Brand actually prints a ruler on the edge of its packaging, so I keep one of their little yarn bands in my wallet, because I mean my little bag, because it's really handy to have that. And I've got a, a gauge thing. If I'm not sure what size needles I have, I can double check with my gauge thing. I've got some more of these pins. A lot of these little accessories were given to me um, by people that have gotten out of it or maybe their grandmothers knitted and they didn't want any of the uh, any of the needles or whatnot. So that's why I have a lot of these accessories. But as you can see, they don't go bad. And when you're teaching a class or you're getting together with friends who knit, it's nice to have the extras that you can share. This is just a measuring tape, you know, for if I need to measure something longer than a ball of yarn, we'll, we'll let me measure, I guess. And I had a larger hook in there because um, often wherever I'm knitting or crocheting, I have my girls with me and they often want to use my scrap yarn and do some crocheting. So there. And bottle of lotion, which is actually kind of, this is kind of gross looking. I really am going to throw this away and get a new bottle of lotion. I'm going to treat myself to a new bottle of lotion um, because my hands get dry and I can't, I'm one of these like people that have to constantly have lotion nearby. I cannot stand the thought of my pores drying out. So I'm like, I've got lotion next to like every chair in my house. Oh, some of the little, little things I've crocheted that I just, you know, killing time, probably in the doctor's office and they ended up in there. But anyways, that's in my bag that goes with me whenever I am knitting away from home or even upstairs. So I just bring it with me wherever I'm knitting. That's with me. Now this right here is actually a, um, a circular needle case. And this was another find at Martin's for like $1.99. And it has these little envelopes in here to keep your circular needles organized. And these were all 
um, all except for that really big pair on the end. These were all ones that were vintage that were given to me and they didn't have their packaging. So I put them right in here. And they were actually from um, one of my, um, one of the relatives. It was um, my husband's aunt. And so I wanted to keep those. Nobody else wanted them and they are handy. And so then as I began to, you know, collect items for the classes that I teach, I found at Martin's they had 99 cent circular needles and they can get kind of expensive. So I kind of grabbed one of every size they had. And rather than taking them out of their packaging and putting them in here where I didn't have enough envelopes for all these, I just, um, put them on a D-ring and oh, this is one of the vintage ones. It was still in the package from um, my husband's great aunt. So uh, I kept it right in there and there it works great. It's on a binder ring. They're all together. And the nice thing about circular needles is that for children, they can handle those needles a lot easier than even the shorter handled straight needles. As long as they don't get their sides mixed up with what side they're working from, um, it's a lot easier for smaller hands to handle. So if you have smaller hands, you may want to try round needles. That brings me to my next thing I want to show you because it's my favorite, um, my favorite needles. And they are the Denise Interchangeable Knitting Needles. Some people really don't like interchangeables, but when I started knitting, I was an adult. I was pregnant with my uh, first child and um, I wanted a hobby where I could kind of chill out and relax a bit. And so I started knee uh, knitting with a pair of needles that I made out of dowels. And um, so I didn't have any needles and I saw this set at a local yarn shop and it gives you every size from five to 15. And then you can either use them straight. You could put like a straight cord on each end. Like see, there's those straight ones and then the little ends, or you can make any size circular needle you want. It just seemed like the most bang for my buck. And I remember, cause this was like $45 and I was really, I, I really wanted it. And um, I mentioned it to my husband and he bought it for me for my birthday or for Christmas. Uh, one of those occasions. I can't remember which occasion, but he got me these and I was so excited and I really enjoyed them. And I haven't had a problem with them unhooking on me. I know some people are afraid to use the interchangeables because they're afraid the the um, cords will come unhooked from the needles, but I hadn't had that problem. Um, so I really like these. I could get rid of all my other needles almost, except for my really, really tiny ones and my really, really big ones, except for the fact that I teach classes and my daughters knit and they'll probably take those straight needles um, with them. Uh, but if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for the fact that I taught, I would just have these and that would be, that would be fine. Other than, you know, just large ones I might need for novelty projects. Now they also have crochet hooks and it was funny because I mentioned how much I love these on a past video and they sent me the interchangeable crochet set. So, um, I really, I really appreciate that. It was very nice of them. And that again, gives you all the hooks you need from a, a US size 19 all the way down to a um, size F, which is a five, or millimeters would be, the smallest would be 3.75 millimeters all the way up to a 15 millimeter. And um, again, it's great for um, Tunisian crochet or anytime, like when you're doing an afkin and you want those long cords or you know, you just want to get creative with your stitching, I guess. I just like that I have these basic sizes and they're all right here. And um, I like the nylon needles. That's what these are. Some people do, some people don't. I actually like nylon, then my second favorite would actually be aluminum, then my third would be bamboo. And I know a lot of people are really partial to bamboo, but that's just my um, my preference. The good thing about bamboo is if you're using the double point needles is that they're not, if you're working with a slippery yarn, it's not gonna slip off a of bamboo as easily. And the I would say the nylons are kind of in between. They're not as slippery as aluminum, but they're not as, um, they don't drag as much as bamboo. So they're kind of in the middle, but um, you know, everyone's different. Now I'm gonna show you how I store my yarn. So let me pause the video, move the camcorder and uh, we'll get right to that. All right, now you get to see the Morticia Adams face. Oh, that's scary, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going back here in the shadows so that the white balance isn't my face anymore. And these are my totes of yarn. Now, if you've um, watched my channel for a while, you're probably familiar with the way I used to store my yarn. I had a, a paperback book rack here, like my, my librarian had given it to me. And so in all the little baskets where you put the books, I had my yarn kind of sorted by color. But the thing is, when I would spin it around to pick my color, sometimes balls of yarn would go flying over into my husband's workshop area and it would get all sawdusty. And then the dust just from the woodworking was getting all over the yarn. Um, so I decided that I wanted to kind of put them under wraps because it's not like I need to get to yarn every single day. If I'm pulling things for a project, I'm generally getting my yarn and then going somewhere else to work. I typically don't knit down here. So what I did was I got these, um, 
these totes from the Family Dollar. And they're just these really big, I'm not exactly sure of the size, really big, maybe 18 gallon? I don't know, they're really, they're really quite big. Um, I would say they're probably about two feet by three feet, maybe? And I made sure I got clear ones because I wanted to be able to see what was in them. And I just divided them up. I put um, warm colors in one tote and cool colors in the other. You could divide your yarn up differently. Maybe you have a lot of just regular worsted weight smooth yarn and you want to put them in one tote and all your novelties in another tote. Or maybe you'd rather have smaller totes and have them broken up more specifically. Or maybe one tote, chocolate block full, is what works for you. I like this because I can kind of, warm colors generally go good together, cool colors generally go good together, and I can rifle through there and put yarns together, and I like this yarn soup. I just like, I like my bead soup. I like the uh, the different balls of yarn and textures kind of mingling together because it gives me ideas when I go look through that. Um, it gives me ideas of new projects and things I want to pull together. So that works really well for me. So I have my pinks and yellows and oranges and browns up here and then like my blues and purples and whatnot down there and then I have one more tote that's like this except it's not to see through because I really don't want to see the contents of this other tote underneath and that stores all my felt and um, like styrofoam balls and kind of the soft crafts kind of clean kid craft stuff like uh, stuff I would use in my craft class at the library so that's all in that way bottom tote which is identical to this except that it's not clear it is uh, blue and opaque so that does it for my yarn storage. I know I don't have the uh, huge yarn stash like some people do, but I think it's definitely plenty, in more than I need probably, because as knitters we can definitely um, easily get more, it seems. It seems like it grows. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I hope this video doesn't come out so crazy, blown out, Morticia-like, um, and I hope you had a really good look at the different things that I use for knitting and crochet. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to you and um, answer you if I can. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!